In this segment, I want to discuss the hi-hat cymbals. This part of the drum set probably has the most interesting history, starting from being attached to the rim of the bass drum and being struck with a, a rod attached to the beater, all the way up to a low boy and to what we call the hi-hat stand. <clears throat> it's important to make sure that when you set up your hi-hat stand that there's quite a bit of space between the cymbals. Oftentimes, developing drummers are not very comfortable with their left foot. However, in jazz music, the backbeat, which is the two and four, is carried on the hi-hat. And so if you don't have very much space between the cymbals, it's going to be difficult to get a really nice snap, which is really important. More space is better than less because you don't necessarily have to take advantage of it. You can just open up the cymbals just a little bit, or you can open them up to the full range that's available if you have more space. One and a half to two fingers is a good standpoint. And you might notice that the cymbals aren't always at the same exact distance. That is because on the bottom of this hi-hat stand, especially for the cymbal here, there's an angle adjustment screw right here. And it's important to make sure that the bottom cymbals have a slight little pitch to them. So when they come together, they go kerchick. Because if the cymbals meet exactly together at the same time, you get sort of a vapor sound where you don't really hear the sound of the cymbals because the air can't escape quickly enough. So. That sounds a little flat. Sometimes it'll go dull on you because the cushions will become angled to where the bottom cymbal is and you have to spin them. That's a little better sound. As far as the top cymbal, make sure that it's fairly relaxed and loose. I mentioned in the cymbal, ride cymbal and crash cymbal segment that I don't use wing nuts, except for the crash because that one I strike harder and I don't want it to fly off the stands. These have tall posts which allow the cymbals to stay on the stand and I'm never beating them up so much that they're gonna come off the stand. But it, make sure this is loose. Oftentimes these cymbal clutches are too tight and the cymbals cannot breathe. As far as playing the hi-hat cymbal with your foot, there's a couple of different techniques that you can use. Probably the simplest one is what's called a rocking the foot motion, where you basically start with your heel on one, toe on two, Heel on three and toe on four. So it's a one, two, three, four. The other method is to play with your whole leg where you keep your heel off the pedal and you can bounce your leg up and down. Now you can hear the sound change. The cymbals have a shorter, higher pitched, snappier sound. When I play heel down, even at the same tempo, you can hear how the cymbals have a more relaxed and longer tone. So depending upon the tempo, the volume, what kind of a feel I want to create, it's going to change what type of pedal technique that I use. So if I'm playing a slower swing, I'm probably going to use the heel toe rocking the foot motion because I feel like I get a better cymbal sound. Compare that to this. One is not necessarily better than the other. It's really personal preference. I like to utilize both techniques. I always play heel up when I'm playing very fast tempos. It just seems to make my foot create more snap. It feels like I'm more on top of the beat, and at those faster tempos, it puts a little bit more energy into it. The next thing I want to talk about is the opening and closing of the two-beat hi-hat sound. This is very, very important. Many young drummers really have problems understanding exactly how to do this. I'm going to make it simple for you. First thing I want you to do is start playing the cymbals and gradually close them until they sizzle. Something like this. So they got a lot of sizzle, almost like there's a rivet. So as you do that, start grabbing it. And notice that the sound is muffled now. It's not the same sound as if I close it with my foot, which is more staccato, which means shorter. This one has a muted sound. So if you were playing a standard swing ride pattern on a ride cymbal, and you muffled the two and four like this, Same technique on the hi-hat, you just grab it, let it go. Open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close. You might notice I'm playing with the tip of the stick. 
my thumb is on top of the stick and not on the side, and I'm not playing on the edge of the cymbals. If I'm playing more rock and funk, where I want a heavier cymbal sound, I'll play on the edge. This is thicker. On top, it's thinner. And I want to create that ride sound. So I'm treating the hi-hat cymbal basically like a small ride cymbal, trying to play once again about halfway between the center hole and the edge to achieve the best possible sound. Now I can do that with my foot. And what that allows is my left hand can start playing some different patterns. But generally, if the option allows, I like to just muffle or mute with my hand. So hopefully that will give you some more things to consider with the hi-hat. It's very important that you keep that open, closed phrase the way I demonstrated. Thank you.